educator at Mohai, and this is Idea Lab at Home. Join us as we tinker, experiment, and create our way through history with a new topic and activity every other month. Today, we are exploring music, and specifically the electric guitar. The electric guitar has played a huge role in Seattle music history, perhaps most notably with grunge music, also known as the Seattle Sound, which is a style of alternative rock that emerged in the Seattle area during the mid-1980s and became a national sensation by the 1990s. This style of music blends elements of punk and metal together and is characterized by heavy guitar riffs and a distorted or dirty electric guitar sound. But the electric guitar and Seattle have a history that goes all the way back to the 1930s. Who invented the electric guitar? The answer isn't so straightforward. Electronic hobbyists and guitar makers experimented for years trying to find a way to electronically amplify their sound. And in the 1930s in particular, there were a lot of simultaneous innovations kind of happening at the same time and also building off of each other. One of these inventions was by a man named Paul Tutmark, a Seattle performer and music teacher who was passionate about the Hawaiian lap steel guitar. And sometime around 1935, building off the work of George Beecham and Adolf Rickenbacker's electric lap steel guitar design. Tutmark designed his own electromagnetic pickup system and attached it to a solid body bass guitar. And this is believed to be the very first electric bass guitar ever made. To understand how pickups work, we first need to understand sound waves. Sound is caused by vibrations which travel in waves through matter like air, liquids, and solids, Hard surfaces reflect sound well, and soft surfaces absorb sound. Guitar strings have tension, and the strumming or plucking of guitar strings causes vibrations, which cause sound. The vibration frequency, or pitch, is affected by a string's thickness, by its length, and also by the string's tension. The amplitude or volume of the sound waves is affected not only by how soft or hard you strum the guitar, but it's also amplified by the sound hole and the body of the guitar itself. And then the materials and shape of the guitar itself affect what's called the timbre or the color of the sound. The strings on an electric guitar work basically the same way, but instead of the sound being primarily amplified by the body of the guitar, it's being amplified by an electromagnetic pickup that's placed directly underneath the strings of the guitar. When you run an electrical current through a wire, it creates a magnetic field, making the wire an electromagnet. The sound waves of the guitar strings disrupt the magnetic field below, and that impacted electromagnetic signal travels through electronic modifiers like pedals, and eventually to an amplifier and a speaker. So we're taking mechanical energy, sound waves, turning it into electrical energy via an electromagnet, and then transferring it back into mechanical en energy, which we experience as sound. You can experiment with the science behind guitar strings by building a box guitar out of common household materials. Let's find out how. To build your box guitar, you are going to need the following things. You're going to need a cardboard box like this one that has flat sides uninterrupted by flaps. And you're also going to want it to be small enough that you can wrap rubber bands around it. You could even maybe use a tissue box that already has a hole cut into the top of it if you want. You're going to need scissors to cut the hole in your cardboard box. So you might also want a box cutter just to get that hole started, but ask an adult before you start using one. But you're definitely gonna need a regular pair of scissors to cut your box and your decoration supplies. And then you're gonna want some packaging tape in order to sturdy up and close your box before you get started, and then other kinds of adhesives like glue or tape in order to decorate your guitar, which brings us to 
decoration supplies. So you can use anything you want to decorate your guitar. You can use paper, paint, stickers, markers, whatever you have um, and whatever you feel like. And you're also going to need something to be the neck of your guitar. You can use a paper towel roll, which you can attach a little bit more easily to the top by kind of clipping the ends so that they're splayed and you can glue it flat down. Or you can use something like this paint stirrer, which will sit flat against the box. And then you're also going to need some rubber bands of various lengths and sizes and thicknesses. And then you also will want two of something stick-like, whether that's a pair of chopstick, a pair of straws, a pair of pencils, markers, that these are gonna be the nut and the bridge of your guitar. Step one is to make our guitar body. So I've sealed up the top flaps of my matzo box so that the guitar body is nice and sturdy and solid. Next up is to decorate the body of your guitar. And the next thing that I'm gonna do is cut a hole in the front of my guitar body. So I'm gonna get that started with a box cutter and then cut a circle that's bigger. Next, you're going to attach the neck to your guitar. And I'm gonna do that with a paint stirrer and a piece of duct tape or two or three. Like so. And I want to add something, I want to add some fun stuff to my neck uh, to kind of mimic the frets on my guitar. And I'm going to do that with smaller pieces of tape to make stripes. Next, you're going to string up your guitar by wrapping your rubber bands vertically around your box. Like that. And the very last thing that you're going to do is add a bridge and a nut to your guitar strings right underneath. And that's going to lift them away from the box so that they're more easily able to vibrate. So I'm placing one that's straight and level at the bottom. And one at the top. Now, on a guitar, a normal acoustic guitar, the nut is straight across as well, but because we don't have frets to change the lengths of our different guitar strings, I'm actually going to angle my nut at the top so that I have a short string and a long string here at the end. How does it sound if you adjust the length of your strings? Different, right? Play around with different box sizes and shapes and strings and positions of your nut and bridge and see what different kinds of sounds you can make with your box guitar. You can locate the activity instructions below or on the Mohai website at mohai.org education. You can also explore Seattle music history with our online collection at mohai.org collections. Thanks for watching.